Good morning, everybody. We're so glad that you're here this morning. Now we're going to have a time of worship through singing. Can we all please stand? And before we begin, we have a verse from Psalm 146, 17 to 21. Let's read that out loud together. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. My lips will speak in the praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. May that be a prayer and a desire that we would, as a church, um, together praise his holy name forever and ever, no matter what the situation is. And so uh, we're going to have this time of just singing. Um, it's two songs, so feel free to sing along with us. Um, and just, if not, feel free to listen to the lyrics that are being sung.
It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. God, may we, um, may we bless you at all times, God. Um, how sometimes it's tough to um, praise and bless your name when it's tough, when, it's, when we're going through things, God. But we choose, may, our, may we decide to choose to praise you because you are good, because you are sovereign. And you've never left us, you've never forsaken us, you've given us your word as your promises. And that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So God, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your son dying on the cross for our sins and giving us um, that hope through your resurrection, God. May we um, ground ourselves in your son. May we choose to praise you for who you are and what you'll do. Um, God, may we um, fix our eyes on you. May we use this time to fix our eyes on your son. So God, we thank you so much for who you are in Jesus' name. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. The death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body laid, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. to life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man can
Father God, we thank you because we can stand because of Jesus as our Savior and as our Lord. And someday, Lord, we're going to see you face to face. And that will be a glorious day, Lord Jesus. But as we wait for your soon coming, Lord Jesus, may you find us, Lord, worshiping you. May you find us, Lord, loving you, serving you, using the best of our abilities for your glory and for your honor. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us to come together in your house of worship to praise you, to thank you, and to express our love for you, Lord Jesus, by listening to your word and just being still before you. We thank you, Lord, because you promised when two or three are gathered together in your name, they're in the midst of them. Lord, we acknowledge your presence in our midst as we worship you and as we adore you search our hearts and our minds if there's sins in our hearts we ask for your forgiveness we ask for your cleansing we desire to be right before you lord so that as we listen to your word as you speak to us father lord that we'll be able to hear your still small voice in our lives lord so that we'll be able to live a life that pleases your name lord Cover this place with your precious blood and fill us with your Holy Spirit. And that your Holy Spirit will work in our midst, in our hearts. As we continue, Father, Lord, worshiping you. Lord, we pray for those who are here this morning, Father. I pray that you bless them, Lord, likewise. Keep them safe, whatever plans they have, Lord. Remind them, Lord, of your faithfulness, of your love for, for them, Lord. And your desire for them to worship you as well. Continue, Father, extend your grace upon them and keep them safe and bless them, Father. We continue to pray, Father, Lord, for your continuous healing upon each one of us. Lord, we're so concerned about this, this pandemic, Lord Jesus, and the variants coming, Lord. I pray for your blessing upon each one of us, for your healing mercy. I pray that you give us strength that we need and continue, Father, give us, make us strong in, over, in, or, in order to overcome, Father, Lord, this, this variance, Lord, this, this sickness, Lord, that's, that's prevalent, Lord Jesus. We thank you so much, Lord, because you're a great healer, a great physician. And above all, Father, Lord, you be the one to protect each one of us. We faithfully trust in you, Lord Jesus. And even this morning, Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. I pray that you bless every one of us, Lord, each found represented, Father, whatever concerns that they have, Father. I pray that your mercy, your grace, and your favor, your provision will be upon them. Because you are our Lord and Savior. You provide our needs, Lord Jesus. Continue, Father, keep us safe this morning as we worship you. And your name be glorified in our lives. Open our hearts and our minds to the truth of the gospel. Open our hearts and our minds, Father, to your message for this morning. And that your name be glorified. Your name be exalted. We offer our lives to you, Lord, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, Lord, as our way of worship and thanksgiving. We praise you, thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Indeed, we have a, a friend in, that's in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we can always trust in the Lord. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, Four up to verse 7 that says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. We have Christ who is our peace, and that in every situation we are in, we can depend fully on our friend, the Lord Jesus Christ. What a friend we have in Jesus. He's our friend.
have a friend, and that is our Jesus, Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Amen. And that's our assurance as believers in Christ. We have a friend, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ who will guide us in our everyday life and concern. Good morning. So beautiful day, Lord, and for us to serve the Lord this morning and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So we thank God for this day. Reminder, this coming Sunday will be our anniversary, church anniversary. So make sure to come. And uh, we'll have a wonderful time of celebration. We have an invited speaker for that celebration, as well as after that, we're going to have a, a lunch celebration as well, and a lot of surprises and games probably we have. So take note of that and be there this coming Sunday. Amen? We're still continuing lear learning in the, the, the message about the book of Ephesians. And we're working on the full armor of God. We have been looking at the spiritual battles we are sim to deal with on a daily basis. And Paul's concern for the believers in Ephesus, not only because of their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, but the, the daily battle they face in life. We have seen so far in the book of Ephesians how the Lord has saved us by the grace of God. The moment we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive the gift of eternal life. We receive the assurance of eternal life. We receive the grace of the Lord. And uh, the Lord has given us the gift of life. And then as believers in Christ, we continue to desire to live according to the Lord's desire in our lives. To live a life that pleases the Lord. And one of the things that Paul emphasizes in the book of Ephesians is that we are on the spiritual battle. We are all in the midst of some kind of war with our enemies. And some of us do not even realize the magnitude of the battle. One of the first thing, one of the first thing we must know if we are going to win the battle in our spiritual battle is we must know our opponent. We need to know where to aim our weapons and from whom and what to defend ourselves from. We need to know how to defend themselves, ourselves, and how to subdue, to overcome, or to resist the enemy. As believers in Christ, Paul's mentioning here that we are in a spiritual warfare. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. Now that we belong to Christ, believers in Christ, we belong to the Lord and the enemy is not happy with that. So time and time again, he will find his way in order to put us down, discourage us, tempt us. And we need to overcome that. Satan opposes believers in many ways. Some of them direct and obvious and other methods are indirect and subtle. He is too deceitful, deceitfully powerful and ferocious for any of us. Well, the promise of the scripture is that, that in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can overcome, we become victors instead of victims. That through Christ, we can stand up against Satan, hold our ground, and resist him successfully. In the book of Ephesians, Paul lists the armor of God, right? In the book of Ephesians, Paul lists down the armor of God, the weapons that we can use that we need to put on in preparation for the spiritual battle. Because believers in Christ, we are in the spiritual battle and we need to win as far as this battle is concerned. Open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Where, uh, let's read again this passage wherein it talks about the, the, the armor of God mentioned by Paul. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 17. Okay, let's read it together. Let's try to read it together. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, 
against the powers in this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness to co that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, like the helmet of salvation, and the word of this and the and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god shall we pray our father we thank you for this time that we could be still before you and to listen to your message lord jesus we believe you're in our midst lord we believe in the holy spirit working in our lives and we believe that you desire for us to live a life that is victorious in the midst of our struggle, in the midst of, of our temptations, Lord, in the midst of things that's happening in this world, that you want us, Lord, to have that faith in you, that trust in you, and putting on the full armor of God so that we'll be able to overcome the walls of the enemy, Lord, the temptations in our lives. We desire to follow you, Lord. We desire to obey you. So bless our time together, God, as we study your word this morning. Open our hearts and our minds to the truth of the gospel, to your word, Lord Jesus, and bless your message and your messenger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're talking about the full armor of God. In previous Sundays, we learn about uh, we, so far, we learned about two things, okay? Two armors, and that is the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness, okay? First, the belt of truth. What is the belt of truth that needs to be buckled up? That, that is the word of God. In order for us to overcome the enemy, we need to have the word of God as our weapon. We need to have the word of God buckle in our ways. We need to have the word of God... Uh, Tighting our lives in order for us to overcome the enemy. Actually, we're talking about the belt of truth or the word of God, and especially the absolute truth, which is Jesus Christ. The very center of the Bible focus on Jesus Christ. In order for us to overcome the enemy, we should have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the absolute truth of the word of God. The absolute truth is that we have Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. He died on the cross for our sins, and he's a coming, coming again in order to bring us to his eter eternal, dest their eternal destination. We need to buckle that. We need to tighten that truth, the word of God. Meaning, as believers in Christ, we read the word of God, we understand the word of God, we try to grow reading or having the word of God in our lives. Belt of truth. The second one, last Sunday we mentioned about the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate is the one protecting our heart. So the idea of breastplate of righteousness is that we are protecting our heart from sin. We are protecting our heart from the temptation or sin problem or sin control and the attack of the enemy in our lives. So we need to wear the breastplate of righteousness in order for us to protect our heart which is the center of emotion, which is the center of, of, of thinking, of, of action, as well as controlling our lives. The heart is the seat of our emotion. So we should be careful about that. Let's have the breastplate of righteousness, the truth of the gospel, uh, uh, holiness in our lives in order for us to be able to overcome the enemy. In order for us to overcome the enemy, we should, have, we should not have unconfessed sin. We need to make sure that we're right before God. We have to make sure that we're not compromising with sin, but rather we're allowing the power of God to work in our lives. The third piece, we're going to third now. The third piece of the armor Paul mentioned is in Ephesians chapter 6 is the shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace. The shoes of peace found in verse 15, which says, Stand firm then with your feet, feeted with the readiness that comes 
from the gospel of peace. Our focus this morning is on the soldier's footwear, the shoes or the sandals. Now, we love shoes, right? We buy a lot of shoes, like Imelda Marcos. We love shoes. We buy shoes, and, and why do you buy shoes? For fashion. <laughs> some for fashion, some for, for, uh, for outside look. But actually, we wear shoes for our what? Protection, right. We wear shoes for our protection, for our safety. And that's what Paul mentioning here as far as soldiers' footwear is concerned. Now, now what purpose did shoes serve for a Roman soldier? What's the purpose do these spiritual shoes serve for us as well? Now, the typical, the typical soldier of a Roman Empire wore a specific type of footwear called the caligae or what they got the caliga in, this, in the single form. But talks about the kind of footwear a, a Roman soldier wears. These sandals actually is tied up or laced up tightly in the center in order to provide the support for the ankle. They are made of thick sole designed, designed, uh, designed to protect the feet from sharp fragments or debris or as well as traps. Now, one of the common traps in use by the enemies consisting of burying sharpened sticks with their tips just above the surface of the ground. The enemies, would, the enemies during the time, they put like, uh, they bury sharpened sharpen sticks on the ground that when the soldier comes in and if they don't have that kind of shoes, they will definitely be hurt. And without the protection of the thick sole, the soldier's feet could be first wounded, severely hindering them to the ability to fight. And if infection set in, they might be removed from the battle altogether. So it's very important for them to wear this kind of shoes because that's a thick sole. It protects them from anything that will hurt their feet. The second distinct feature actually of the soldier shoes was its, its uh, spike-like button, okay, the, the hub-nailed bottoms, okay. It's like uh, an athletic um, shoes right now, the sole, it has like spikes, okay. Like if you uh, played track and field, your shoes actually have spikes, right. That is very crucial when it comes to the game, even football or soccer. They wear that. Now, so another the distinction is that uh, soldiers' shoes should have this kind of uh, spikes. And these iron spikes, which, which protruded from the sole of the sandals, provided traction for the soldier when climbing a slippery hillside or an enhanced ability to stand firm on grass or mud similar to today's athletic sole spikes. These shoes actually were essential piece of armor for a Roman soldier. Without protected feet and firm footing, a sword and shield would matter little. As the shoes and the sandals protects and prepares the feet of the soldier, so likewise peace protects us and prepare us for the battle. Paul says, we need to put on the shoes, we need to put on the sandal of peace. And the shoes refers to peace, that we need to put on peace to win against the temptation or the schemes of the enemy. We need to wear that kind of peace. Peace actually prepares us for the, for the turmoil and uncertainty of life and also help us to stand firm when the devil attacks us. We need to be standing firm as believers in Christ, and that, that shoes of peace is very important. Now, according to Paul, peace is an awesome weapon. It is a defensive and offensive weapon. Peace will not only protect you, peace is also a brutal weapon which when used properly or tightly fit, 
keep spiritual foes or enemies where they belong and that is under our feet so that we can stand against the enemy. If we only give peace a loosely fitting position in our lives, then the affairs of life will knock our peace out of place. We must bind peace upon our minds and our emotion, upon our emotions in the same way that the Roman soldier makes sure to bind their shoes tightly unto their feet. So when peace has its firm grip in our lives, then we are ready for action. When the assurance that their shoes were being were going to stay in place. Now they were ready to march on into the battlefield and confront the enemy. Paul is clearly letting us know that peace is the found foundational of our lives. We have to have a firm put footing in our lives. And this peace gives us a foundation so secure that we can move out in confident faith without being moved by what we see or what we hear. This peace puts us in a position to look directly to the face of the enemy or adversary in our lives and to face challenges without being moved by what we see, by what we feel, or what we hear. The thing is that if we have that peace, it will make us firm, even situations in our lives would come because of that peace, we have that assurance of that confidence in Christ. Now, we need to put on the shoes of peace. But let's look at first the four peace as needed to know. There are four in the scripture, there are four idea of peace, of peace as needed to know in order for us to be able to win our spiritual battle. And this peace actually, I call it progressive peace. By the way, I entitled the message this morning as walking with the message of peace. As believers in Christ, we walked in peace with one another. But when we speak of peace, we have what we call progressive peace. Progressions of peace. Okay? There are four progressions of peace that will help us better understand what it means to be prepared by peace. There are four peace mentioned in the scripture, which I call it progressive peace, that will help us better understand what it means to be prepared by peace when it comes to our spiritual battle. Number one is the peace with God. The first one is that peace with God. It's the knowledge that we have eternal life in Christ. It's the knowledge that we have received Christ is the knowledge that will allow us to stand against the enemy. It is the knowledge, it's a, it's a relation with Jesus Christ as our Savior. The first peace is that peace with God. The first mention of peace in scripture is that peace with God. Before we became a Christian, or before we accepted Christ, or we become, we become believers in Christ, we are enemies of God, right? And once we accept Jesus Christ, our Savior, we have peace with God. We have peace with God. We're no longer enemies of the Lord. We have peace with God. In Romans 5 verse 1 says, since we have been justified through faith. When was that? When we received Christ, right? When we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So peace with God allows us to stand firm in the knowledge that we have eternal life. That's the first peace here, the peace with God. Peace with God allows us to stand firm in the knowledge that we have eternal life. So that when the enemy comes to tempt us, because we have the peace with God, we can overcome any doubts in our lives. Peace with God allows us to stand firm on the knowledge that we have eternal life. Knowing that we have received eternal life, it keeps us aware of the victory that we have against the evil forces, that we are eternally belong to a powerful God. There's a peace that comes from our change, from our change status before God, that we are his children. 
The peace with God reminding us that we are children of the Lord. That peace with God changes us. Peace with God changes our standing. We're no longer sinners. We're no longer enemy of God, but rather we're saved by grace. Peace with God changes our character. It changes our outlook. It changes our attitude because we have peace with God. Peace with God changes our motivation. We don't live for God based on guilt, but based on gratitude. With the peace with God, we know where we stand, and we stand firm. Peace with God allows you to dig in and keep fighting because greater is he who is in you than the enemy that is in the world. That Satan will never ultimately prevail against us because he has already been defeated at the cross. The peace of God is able to keep us from falling. That if we stand firm in his grace and stay connected with him through prayer and trust, we have the power to overcome the enemy because of our peace with God. So with Christ, we have peace with God. If you receive Christ, if you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, you have that peace with God. You're no longer enemies of the Lord. You belong to God. Therefore, you can overcome the enemy. With Christ, we have peace with God. We belong to a victorious God. We belong to a powerful God that can strengthen us in our spiritual battle with the enemy. Secondly, not only do we have peace with God, peace, of, peace with God, but also about peace of God. Okay? The peace within our hearts and mind amidst circumstances, amid storms in life, amidst evil schemes and challenges. The second was the peace of God. The first one is peace with the Lord. Now, second one is the peace of God. That we have peace within. When we have peace with God, we can know the peace of God in our lives. So the moment we receive Christ and we receive the peace with God, it comes automatically we, that we have peace of God. Meaning that no matter what happens in our lives, we, are, we have that peace, we're safe and secure because we belong to Christ. We have peace within. The reason why sometimes believers and Christians are not so overwhelmed with things that are happening in this world because of what? Because there's peace within our heart. I know there should be concern as far as this pandemic is concerned, but because we know that God is our healer, because we know that God is powerful, because we know that God is with us, then we're no longer fearful, but we're strengthened by the power of the Lord. We have peace within. When we have peace with God and are no longer, and are no longer separated from him, but rather we have peace within our hearts and minds, and that's what we need. Do we have peace of mind? Do we have the peace of God in the midst of situations in our lives? You have to check yourself. Whenever you have concern and problem, you're so overwhelmed with a lot of things, observe, check your peace with the Lord. Well, are you a believer in Christ? If you're a believer in Christ, why are you fearful? Why are you overwhelmed? You need to ask for God's help in order for you to have that peace within. When we have peace with God and we're no longer separated from him, we have the peace of our mind and heart. In, in John chapter 14, verse 27 says, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the word gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be what? Be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Why? Because there's the peace of God in our hearts. Too often, Christians stop at peace with God. They never really pursue the peace of God. God's peace will help you, will help us at peace with the world that's happening and with ourselves as well. 
And but Paul tells us that those already have peace with God, that we need to put on peace. Satan loves to attack our minds and our emotion. But the peace of God is greater than our own fearful thoughts and will guard how we think and how we feel as we stay close to Jesus. Lives without peace are often characterized by other things. When there's when we don't when, when we take away we don't have that peace of God, there comes stress. The reason why we're stressful in life because we don't allow the peace of God working in our hearts or we don't remind ourselves of the peace of God. The reason why sometimes we're so stressful, there's depression, there's hurt, there's hopelessness, there's, pan there's panic, there's guilt, there's fear, because that is a, the character, the, that's the indication that you ho don't have the peace of God. Meaning as believers in Christ, there should be the peace of God in your heart. You should allow God to take control of your heart. We have peace within, but sometimes we entertain doubts, sins. That's why we're stressful. We're so, that's why we're depressed. That's why we experience hurt. We experience hopelessness. Without God's peace, we have no effective way of dealing with these things. Now, because we have the peace with God, meaning having your personal relationship with Him, we likewise, we likewise receive the peace of God, meaning his peace that would enable us to be strong against the scheme of the enemy. Do you know that we have the peace with God, the peace of God? It's just a matter of reminding ourselves, hey, why am I so worried since I have Jesus in my heart? Peace is not the absence of trials and temptation. It is a gift from God that when, that when utilized, allows us to have a settled mind and a focus fully on our spiritual battle. So peace with God leads to peace within. So if you have relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you should have that peace within. But the question is, why are we fearful? Why are we so overwhelmed? We don't have that peace. It's because you're not availing of the power that God can give you and that the peace. That's why God, that's why the scripture always said, trust the Lord. Always trust the Lord. Have the peace of the Lord. God is reminding us because our tendency as human is for us to be doubtful. It's for us to entertain fear. As Christian, we have that peace within then avail of that. Now, peace with God leads to peace within. Now, when we are at peace with God and with who we are in Him, okay, peace of God amidst uh, challenges in life, we are go therefore we are going to pursue peace with others. I'm going to the third part. The third piece is peace with others. Not only do we have peace with God, peace within, Thirdly, is that there should be peace with others. Meaning living in peace with one another. That we are peacemakers. Since we have the peace from God, we're peace with the Lord, and we have the peace in our heart. The third principle of peace is that we should be peacemaker. We should be an agent of peace. Those who walk in the peace of God reach out to restore. Say the word restore. Reach out to restore peace in relationship among the brethren. We become peacemaker. We don't fight. We don't make war. We make peace. We aim unity. We aim love. We aim peace with one another. We don't start something that will lead to animosity. We as believers in Christ, we have the peace with God, peace with Peace in God with the Lord and peace with ourselves. But at the same time, we need to be at peace with one another. Actually, if the devil can get us fight with one another, he knows it will affect our walk with Christ and our ability to stand firm against him. When the devil, when, if, the, if the devil can get us to fight with one another, 
if we, if the devil would tempt us to fight one another, he knows it will affect our walk with Christ and our ability to stand firm against him. It will affect the building up of one another. Okay? Satan is out to steal our peace so we don't have to shoo that to have the truth to stand firm in it. And we'll st because of that, we're going to start creating hostile attitude and environment because we don't have the third peace. We should be peace with others. James 4.1 says, doesn't say there, what causes fight and quarrels among you? Don't they come from the desire that battle within? If Satan can stir up conflict, if Satan can stir up strife and breaks the unity God has given us with one another as members of the family of Christ, then he wins the round. When there's fighting in the body of Christ, when there's fighting within the family, then Satan wins that round. Because not only that you, have, you should have that peace with the Lord and peace with, before God, you should also have that kind of peace with one another. A Christian soldier's fight to establish the peace of God, not to make war. That's why Paul says in 4, chapter 4, verse 3 of Ephesians, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit in the what? Through the bond of what? Peace. Meaning we are peacemaker in the bond of peace. God desires for us to, 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 to have that kind of desire to every effort. We don't burn bridges. We build bridges. We build relationship with peace, peace relationship with one another. We need to put on the shoe of peace with our relationship with fellow believers, with your family, with your children. There should be peace relationship within the family of God and even your own family. There should be love, not war. There should be peace within the family. And that's one thing we need to ex exert effort. If you, love your, if you love the Lord and you have the uh, peace from the Lord, you should strive to have that love and peace within the family. Sometimes it's hard, right? <laughs> That's always a conflict. But we should strive to put on the shoe of peace, especially within our household of faith, within our own household. We need to be in peace with our fellow brothers and sisters. We need to, have to be in peace with our families and church family. We care and love one another. We live in peace with one another and not thinking of destroying one another. We speak peace. Actually, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2 says, Carry one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ and the law of love. We peace with others, we carry one another's burden, and so we fulfill the law of love. Okay? So peace with others. The third, the last one is peace to other. Others. Sorry, I forgot to put the S. Peace to others. Meaning passing peace along with others. As soldiers of Christ, we are to stand firm the peace we have with God. But we also is to pass on the peace along with others. Now, what do you do with good news of peace? We tell it. What do we do with the, the good news of peace? The, the peace that we have with the Lord, the peace with the inside, and the peace with one another. Thirdly, we, 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 we share, we tell this peace. We share it. We get the word out. We share the good news with those who do not personally know Jesus Christ so that they can establish a relationship with him and walk in the path of peace. The fourth peace is that we establish not only peace with one another, but we encourage them to receive that peace. And that is bringing them to Christ. We share. Acts 20, 24 says, but, no, but none of these things move me nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish the race 
with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord to testify, Paul says, to testify the gospel of grace and of peace. Romans 10, 15 says, And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who brings glad tidings of good things. We should bring that peace that we receive from the Lord, that we receive with them, with the, that we receive with one another. We share that, that peace to those who need it, to those who need Jesus Christ into their heart. The reason why sometimes they are overwhelmed because they don't have Christ. So our role is to share that peace to them. We share the good news about Jesus Christ. Okay? And, and uh, that Jesus Christ is the Savior and our Lord, His grace and merited favor, and His plan of salvation. As Christian soldiers or warriors who are sent to announce the good news, to announce the good news of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, which will spread His way of peace around the world. We should be agent of peace. It's funny, whenever you have a, a um, beauty pageant, what do you want to do? I want, I want to be, I want world peace, which is in a sense true. We want that. But that peace only comes from the Lord. And once we receive Christ, we have that peace with the Lord. We have peace within. We have peace with one another. And we share that peace to those who need it. Put our, shoes, put our shoes or sandals on. Are we ready to move, to spread those glad tidings to others? And the Apostle Paul says, he, during the Apostle, Apostle Paul's time, he walked countless miles to deliver the good news. Well, the best place that we can share the good news is your family. Does your family know about Christ? Do you bring your family to the Lord? Do they experience that peace from the Lord? Okay? We don't have to go far. Just focus on your family first and let them know that kind of peace that God provides and establish that peace with one another. We share that peace. We put on that peace. So Paul refers peace that needed for us in order to win the battle. We have peace with God. We have peace within. We have peace with others. And we have peace to others. We should get our shoes on and stand strong with Christ. Now the question is how do we pursue peace? Quickly, pursuing peace, pursuing of peace. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 15 it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. Since we are members of one body and we are called for peace and be thankful. So how do we put on the sandals of peace? Let's go to the practical aspect now. How do we put on the sandal of peace? How do we pursue the peace, this peace? I'll... I think there are three effective ways we need to pursue peace. Number one, our daily prayers. You want to pursue peace? Start praying. You want to pursue peace? We need to have our daily prayers. Daily prayers is like the protection afforded by the thick sole of the sandals. Prayer acts. Prayer is something we need to do. It acts, actually prayer acts as a protection. Protection, protecting us from the trap of Satan in our everyday life. And the things that happens all around us that tends to wear down our peace. We need to pray daily. That's our power. You know that prayer is power. Amen? Are you still listening? You know that prayer is power. In order for us to have the power to overcome the enemy, the power to overcome fears and, and, and situations in our lives is to pray. We thank God we have prayer warriors in the church. We have our seniors are very faithful at prayer warriors. That's why God is blessing the church. That's why God is blessing each one of us. That's why God is blessing the family because we are praying for one another. Prayer is very important. In order for us that peace is to pray. You know how during this pandemic, God has been faithful protecting our members because their prayer warriors praying for our safety. Do you know that? They're praying for you. The power of prayer within the family of Christ. That God has been faithful because of the prayer of the righteous people. 
the Bible says. So our daily prayer is important. In, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in what? In everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then what? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. We have peace of mind because we pray. Okay? In everything by prayer and petition. We need to pray. To win our spiritual battle, we need to pray for God's wisdom daily. Peace comes as a result of knowing your decisions are directed by God. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. All her paths are peace. The Bible says in Proverbs. To win the battle, we need to give our anxious and anxiety to God. Pray your heart out to God. Pray. When you're overwhelmed with things, just pray. Talk to the Lord. Prayer is power. And once you pray, the peace of God works in your life. To win the battle, we need to give our anxious thought, our anxiety to God. Pray with your heart. In 1 Peter 5, 7, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. He cares for you. Second, pursuing peace by, by dwelling on God's promises. The second prince practical aspect is in order for us to have peace, we, we, we receive peace by trusting in God's promises. We receive peace by meditating, reading the word of God, memorizing God's promises. The second principle we need to, to do in order for us to have that peace of mind, peace of heart, is our daily time with the Lord. Dwell in his promises. Reading God's word, dwelling in God's promises, help us to dig in for the fight just like a, a spike sandals provided traction for the soldiers. In order to, for us to be strong footing, to have a strong footing, we need to build on the promise of God. Strength your mind, strengthen your mind, or stand, stand firm with the promises of God. How many promises of God do you know? Let me ask you. How many promises of God have you memorized? How many promises in the Lord from the scripture that you're, you're, you're trying to, to, uh, to help, help you in your individual lives as Christians? Are you reading the word of God in the first place? Do we know God's promises? Do we claim the promise of God? Whenever we're tempted, we can use the word of God and his promises to overcome sin. Standing firm and focusing on his promises through reading his word daily help us to the battle of our enemy of peace. Psalms 119, 165 says, Those who love your instructions have great peace and do not stumble. Those who love your word those who love your promises have great peace and do not stumble. The peace of God depends on trust and obedience to God. That's why in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you know this verse, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What? Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways. I like this part. In all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will make your path straight to trust in the Lord and his promises, to trust and pray before the Lord and trust his promises, to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Again, why heart? Because that's where the attack of the enemy. Once our heart is attacked by the enemy, it goes to our mind, it goes to our action. But once we have that, the promise of the Lord, it gives us that peace of mind. And God will give us that peace even in the midst of a battle. Thirdly, for serving peace is being equipped to share the gospel of peace. Okay? To be prepared with the gospel of peace, we must know what the gospel is. We must know the gospel, which is believe the gospel and share it to others. One way for us to have that peace is that we share that peace to others as well. It means praying for specific people, specific person, and opportunities to share the gospel of peace. It means praying for your family, praying for your spouse, praying for your children, praying for your siblings, praying for, the, for people who are close to your heart to have the opportunity to share the gospel to them. Bring them to Christ. Be equipped to share the gospel of peace. It means actively looking for opportunity to share your faith. 
If you're not sharing the gospel of, fe- of peace of Jesus Christ, you're fighting a bare foot. So as believers in Christ, God challenged us in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our temptation, in the midst of things that's happening in the world. We need to stand firm. I like the song earlier, we need to stand. We need to stand as believers in Christ. No matter what happens in our lives, we need to stand. And if we are standing in peace, that will allow us to have that power to overcome the enemy. We pursue peace. We pursue peace in all about winning our spiritual battle. To have real peace, we have to put our trust in God and obey the word of God. And when we do that, instead of focusing towards our worries, focusing towards our fears, or outward outward on circumstances beyond our control, we will put our trusts in the Lord and put on the sandal of peace. We must be grounded in the peace of God. For only His peace will keep you in that place of confidence. We should stay grounded in the peace of God because the peace of God will keep us when Satan tries to put doubt in our minds and tempt us to do what is not pleasing to God. Allow the peace of God work in our heart. The peace of God will guard your heart. The peace of God will guard your mind, even when Satan is trying to make you lose your mind. The peacemaking Christian makes peace by opposing opposing Satan and his works and by promoting reconciliation and fellowship with God and with one another. The peacemaker can claim the promise that God of peace will soon crush Satan under his feet, under your feet. Therefore, God says, as believers in Christ, we should continue to live with peace. Live peace with God. If you don't have Christ in your heart yet, you need to have that kind of relationship with the Lord. You need to receive Christ in order to receive that peace with God. But once you receive Christ, we have the peace of God. The peace is within. We're not worried about things. We trust in the Lord. But at the same time, we have peace with one another. We are agents of peace. We, be, we share peace with another, and we share that kind of peace to others. As believers in Christ, we desire to always put ourselves before the Lord in our prayers, in reading the word of God, and growing in our faith in the Lord. Yes, there will be battle. We were in a spiritual battle. Each one of us will, have, will be fighting against the enemy, sometimes in a very subtle way. But we should be very careful. Because the enemy will always be there to give trouble in our mind, to discourage us. But because we have peace with the Lord, because we have the, the peace of God, then it will strengthen us in order for us to overcome any situations in our lives. Amen? We need the peace of God. Put on the shoes. Not for display, but for the strength that God can give us as we overcome the enemy. Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for reminding us of the ability that we have as believers in Christ. And that is the peace of God. We have the peace with God because of our Lord Jesus Christ and we receive him. But at the same time, we have the peace of God. That in the midst of our concern, the midst of our problems, the midst of, in the midst of temptation, we can overcome the enemy because of the peace that we have in the Lord. Likewise, Father, help us to be a, an agent of peace to one another. As believers in Christ, we, we have that peace with one another. We allow love and unity binding in our hearts, Lord, and being an agent of peace with our actions, with our words, with our thinking as well. Likewise, Father, help us, Lord, to be a peacemaker that people would come to know Christ through our life of peace and that we can invite them to the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Help us to be faithful as believers in Christ to be strong in you by having our daily prayer with you, by indwelling and trusting in your promises and living a life that pleases your name. May the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, Lord Jesus, so we'll be able to overcome any temptation, any, any concerns or problems that we face in life. And we thank you because the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a good reminder that we are called to be peacemakers. And it's tough in this world. You know, this world is very chaotic and they're very negative, And that's where 
the beauty of the gospel and the fact that because Christ has given us the power that we can overcome when there are chaotic things, we can, we can speak in peace. And so may that be, but we have to cling on to the Lord and cling to his word. So let's all stand and let's sing as this a response, Lord, I need you. Uh, may it be a prayer that we will, we will uh, cling to Christ um, as that, he, that we will be his mouthpiece. That when we talk to others, it would be peaceful, it would be loving and kind, not chaotic and, and, ru and rude. And um, yeah, we just want to have a, a cling to the Lord and let's sing this together. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my sin runs deep, your grace is more, where grace is found, is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free, holiness is Christ in me.
Yes, indeed, Lord, we need you to live a life pleasing to you. May your grace be upon each of us, Lord Jesus, and for us to live a life of peace with one another, a peace that we can share to those who are in need of peace likewise. Make us, Lord, an agent of peace, an instrument of your will, Lord Jesus. And allow it, Lord, to start within our own household. That kind of love, that kind of peace that you desire for each one of us. But at the same time, the peace that we should be having with one another as one body in Christ. We thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. Give us, allow us likewise to share that peace to those who need that kind of peace from you, Lord. That they would come to know Jesus as well as their personal Savior and Lord. But for us, God, we thank you because we have that peace. That no matter what happens in our lives, Lord, you are in control. That in our times of our concerns, in times of our needs, in times of our illness, in times of our struggles, in times of our concerns, that we can have your peace that surpasses our understanding. To trust in the Lord with all our hearts and to lean at our own understanding that in all our ways, Lord Jesus, to acknowledge you and that you will direct our path to the path of peace. We thank you for your word and bless each one of us. May you be an agent of peace that glorifies and honors your name. We offer our lives to you, Lord, this morning. May you find us, Lord, living a life of peace. With you, Lord, if there are sins in our hearts, to be reconciled with you. But at the same time, to reconcile with one another and be an agent of peace for your glory and for your honor. We thank you for your faithfulness. This means now, God, with your blessing. And unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, that the only God, our Savior, be glorified, majesty, power and authority to Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages both now and forevermore in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. God bless you all and the peace of Christ be with you. Remind